Since the Supreme Personality of Godhead is one without a second, there is no possibility that anything besides himself can exist. So, try to, if you can understand that one line, you can be self-realized. That one line alone is enough for self-realization. Since the Supreme Personality of Godhead is one without a second, there is no possibility that anything besides him can exist. Think about it. He expands himself by his energies in multi-forms of self-expansions and separate expansions as well, just as fire itself by heat and light. Since there is no other existence besides the Lord himself, the Lord associates with anything manifests. His association is with himself. <laughs> In the Bhagavad Gita, the Lord says, Maya tatam idam sarvam jagadavyakti murtinam patstani sarvabhutani natyaham teshvavastitaha. The complete manifestation of the cosmic situation is the expansion of the Lord Himself in His impersonal feature. All things are situated in Him only, and He is not in them. This is the opulence of the attachment and detachment of the Lord. He is attached to everything, yet he is detached from all. <laughs> Very philosophical and quite impossible to understand simply by, you know, philosophical speculation. Om Gyan Timirandasya Gena Jala Slakaya Chaksun Militam Yena Tasmai Sri Gurvena Maha Sri Chaitanya Manobhistam Stapditam Yena Bhutala Yusvayam Rupa Kedam Mayam Dadati Svapadantikam Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutala Sri Bhakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharini Nirasesa Sunyavadi Vastyatya Desatarine Vanchakalpa Turu Vistya Kripa Sindhu Bae Bacha Bhatitanam Bhavane Vyo Vaishnavi Vyo Namaho Namaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadada Rasivasari Gor Bhakta Rinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Ekala Isha Krishna Asabrita <laughs> Nityo Nityanam Chaitanas Chaitananam Ekubahunam Vidadati Kaman Nityo Nitya means one and Nityanam means many Eko Bahunam and there is no one equal to no one greater than the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But then again, how is it possible if you take this verse as it's being explained that there's nothing but the Lord? Because something that appears to be great is simply an expansion or the energy of the Lord. So we say that fire is all encompassing in the sense that it, it's self-contained. It needs nothing outside of itself to describe itself or to function. But what are the qualities of fire? It's heat and light. <laughs> so these two qualities combine together to make fire. And of course, there are other things that you can explain as far as describing what fire actually is. But the two main components are, it gives warmth or heat, and it gives light. <laughs> so you might say anything that has these two qualities together in one is a characteristic of fire. <laughs> so what we're, what the Lord is, the Lord is, He is one, but at the same time He is many at the same time. Jai Shri Shri Gonitai Ki Jai. How can something be one and many at the same time? Usually if something is one, it's one, and if it's many, it's many. But that is from the material perspective, or that's from the 
limited perspective, you might say. So the Lord is the source of all existence. And therefore, whatever is in existence is coming from Him. So we call that His energy. But can you separate the energy from the source? No. Like you, like you can't say, well, the sunshine is different than the sun. It is, but at the same time it's not. So there is a oneness and difference within certain aspects of existence. The best example is the sun. The sun sits in one place within the creation, but it gives heat and light to everything. And because of the presence of the sun, the energy of the sun is its heat and light, and therefore the sun is everywhere. So when we say the sun is everywhere, we don't mean that the globe of the sun is everywhere. We mean that the uh, energy, which is made up of heat and light, is everywhere. So in the same way, Krishna is one, but he expands himself into his different energies, and each of these different energies are non-different than him, but at the same time different. And that's the Vaishnava Siddhanta, Achintya Veda Veda Tattva, Veda Abeda, which means that there is something that is different and same at the same time. <laughs> that we can also use that in a material example too. There are so many human beings, but each human being is different. So there is the oneness is that we're all human, and the difference is that we're each an individual person within the human species. So you have the oneness of human and then you have the variety of each individual within that species. So, but when it applies to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, it's inconceivable. Because from our perspective, we always see duality. Well, there's me and then there's God. <laughs> that is also correct in the sense that we are different from God, but we are this, as the same in, from God at the same time. That's why sometimes people mistakenly or become very powerful and they say, well, now I'm God. I have become God. But no, no one can become God because God is always God. You are who you are. Jivar, Surupai, Krishna, Nitya, Das. You are an energy of God which is the same as God. <laughs> but in a smaller quantity of that same energy. <laughs> and so, for the sake of understanding, or for the sake of exchange, there is two, but there's only one. <laughs> because the principle of existence has one element on it, and that is called love. Love is the principle of existence. Love makes up the whole foundation of reality. <laughs> and sometimes we also say God is love. And that's correct. But love cannot be one, it has to be two. Because there has to be the exchange between two di distinct living entities in order to experience the effect of the loving exchange. There's the lover and there's the beloved. And there's exchange. The Mayavadis say everything is one. And therefore they, they have no understanding of love because they think everything is one, and I am also one with that same source who is one with everything. And there is no difference. And when I become fully realized, then I become that same one that I'm now apparently different from because of my covering of my material energy. <laughs> but that's, that is called philosophy. It's bogus. <laughs> it's not real. The reality is that we are always uh, spiritual, but we are jiva. Jiva means tiny, a particle. For the sake of uh, understanding, we use the example as a drop of water to a, a, a body of water or an ocean. The drop has the same uh, components. It's made its wetness and H2O, you might say, if it's an ocean, it has salt. But you can't say that the, the same amount of salt is in the, it, 
is in the drop that's in the ocean. No. The ocean has immense amount of salt, but the drop has something. <laughs> so this is our relationship with the Lord. We are jiva, we are part of the Lord, but at the same time we are tiny. But because we are part of the Lord, in one sense, we're none different than the Lord. And Prabhupada one time wanted to make a, to illustrate or emphasize this point. He said, you are Krishna, I am Krishna, we're all Krishna. <laughs> yeah, he gave a lecture like that one time. And everybody was, you know, falling off their, you know, awesomeness. <laughs> I couldn't uh, uh, understand what Prabhupada was saying because he had never said that before. But then he said, well, what I'm saying is that everything, there's only one thing, and there is Krishna, there's nothing else. And this verse, or this purport, illustrates that same point, that there's nothing outside of the Lord himself. Therefore, he's not attached to nothing, anything, and he's not detached from anything. Because to be attached and detached, you have to be something that has to be different from you. But there's nothing different from him, so well, there's no question of being him being attached or detached. Um, in the same way, there is nothing different from us, so there's no question of us being attached or detached. But we think we're the, this body, and therefore we make attachment and detachment based on this body. But we do have an attachment. We have, we have to reattach ourselves to Krishna. And that's our only attachment. But then again, if you look at it from another perspective, we're never separated from Krishna. If we think we're separated from Krishna, that is, that is called maya or illusion. We're always with Krishna, constantly. But because of the coverings of the material energy, particularly the mind, we think we're, we're, we're separate from Krishna. <laughs> but we're not, we're never separate from Krishna because we are his uh, energy and he can never be separated from his energies. <laughs> but, the, but the energies are working in different ways and therefore we see separation. Now this is a very uh, succinct and very complete understanding of the nature of the Absolute Truth. Everything is God. So the oneness is being emphasized in this verse here. It says here, there is no possibility of anything besides Him that can exist. And then it says again, since there is no other existence besides the Lord, the Lord's association with anything manifests His association with Himself. <laughs> Far out. Now, what the Mayavadis would say, well, since he's been, and there's nothing outside of him, that means we are also God. <laughs> so they'll take that and reinterpret it in their own way to, to give themselves the definition that they're God. <laughs> but uh, if they're God, then, you know, then, uh, you know, and why go to the dentist if you have a toothache? <laughs> just, you know, if you're God, you can just just think and your toothache is gone. But if, if you're God, you wouldn't get a toothache anyway. So, <laughs> so the, the Maya bodies take this oneness aspect, which is being emphasized in this verse, as a reason for to accept the fact that Everything is God, and everything is not. Uh, everything is not different from God, and therefore the only the only difference is the illusion of difference. That's what they say. They say w w the illusion of difference is the difference, but there's no difference. We also agree up to a certain point, but we say there is a difference, and it's called quantity and quality. We can never be in the same quantitative nature of God, but we are qualitatively the same in the sense that we're pure spirit and He is also pure spirit. And spirit is non-different from itself. <laughs> now this verse is, and, but this verse here that's being quoted, Maya Tatami Dhamma Sarvam Jagadavyakti Murti Nat Matstani Sarvabhutani 
Nachaham Tesvavastita. This is a very interesting verse because it says here, uh, the translation is the complete manifestation of the cosmic situation is the expansion of the Lord Himself in His impersonal feature. All things are situated in Him only, yet He is not in them. But He is. <laughs> The reason why he's saying he's not in them is because the Mayavis will say, well, he's, he's there also, and that means that we are, that we are who he's referring to as being the God who's in the material energy. So this verse is meant to destroy this idea that the living entity is God. But he's in the material energy by his energy, and he's also there in his personal form but he's unmanifested. Unmanifested means that if he wants to appear in this world, he doesn't have to come from somewhere. <laughs> you know, he doesn't have to get on his carrier guru and fly and say, all right, I'll be right there, give me a few minutes. No, he's, he's here right now. He's here everywhere in his personal form. And if he wants to manifest that, he can. And all of a sudden, you see Krishna in his personal form right in front of your eyes. He's there. He's right there now. But the coverings of the material energy and his own will, he, he can appear or not appear, but he's there all the time. He doesn't have to come from anywhere because his energies in him are non-different. <laughs> so he appears within the energy and he is also different from the energy at the same time. <laughs> When you know this, what, what is the benefit from knowing all this philosophy? There's only one thing to do, serve God. That's all. That's the purpose of this whole thing, that there's nothing else. There's no other activity that has any re basis in, in reality. There's only one thing to do, is to serve God. That's all. <laughs> because everything is God anyway. <laughs> So why waste time trying to serve his external energy, which he manifests, is the effects of that manif energy is manifested in a different way. You don't get happiness for serving his external energy, but you get happiness and satisfaction and knowledge from serving him directly. So there's the distinction, because in order for bhakti to manifest, the distinction has to be made. There's bhakti and there's something that is not bhakti. And what is that not bhakti? And that is serving his external energy. And people will say, well, I'm serving his external energy. There's no difference between his external energy and him. Therefore, I'm serving him anyway, right? Correct? <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. But the point is, that exter exter serving the external energy is that when you try to serve the external energy, because the external energy is constituted in such a way that it's mutable, it's changeable. So the external energy is simply made up of him in the form of his energies, which are always changing. And because we are constant, we are soul, we, when we try to serve something that is always changing, we cannot be satisfied because it's different in our nature. But we can create a false sense of satisfaction by thinking we are temporary. Just like people will say, well, yes, material energy is always changing, but I can just keep changing my ways of being happy. <laughs> I can go from one form of happiness to another. Can you do that? <laughs> Well, I just, I'll just enjoy this, and then I'll enjoy this, then I'll enjoy this, and then I'll enjoy this, and then I can be always enjoying, right? He gets bored. Huh? He gets bored. Why? <laughs> you see, it's all the same. Well, the boredom comes because there's no enjoyment there. <laughs> the material energy is constituted in such a way as you can enjoy it. <laughs> it creates a, a certain manifestation of itself that it causes you to become frustrated in your attempt to enjoy it. <laughs> hmm. 
It's like we we a practical example is you know we sit down in front of the our favorite meal and it's for, and we're hungry and it's there you might say all right there's pizza nice pizza with beautiful cheese on it and it looks so good nice nicely prepared by the best pizza maker in in Croatia and you're looking at it and you think oh boy yeah, I'm ready. And so how much can you eat? So you can eat up to a certain level, but then after that, it turns into something else. <laughs> then, it's to, then you have to fast for a couple of days later because you, you know, you got dysentery or diarrhea or some other problem. <laughs> Pains in the stomach. <laughs> so yeah, that's the nature of material life. There is some initial pleasure that comes with the contact with the objects and the senses. But because the way it's constituted, it changes, and therefore you can't really continue in that way. And that's just the way the material energy works. So the material energy is mutable. We have to understand that. It's mutable. Mutable means changeable. It's always changing, always changing. And we're always changing too. But not we as the soul. We are, we are called... What is that word? And it's a word that means fixed. There's a Sanskrit word for fixed. It means hmm? something like that. Yeah, well, fixed up, immovable, like that. It's also in that verse in the Bhagavad Gita. Ajo nityam sashvato yam puranam hanyate hanyamane siride. What is that verse? What's the first line in that verse? Uh, I just quote it. Huh? Yeah, that's the second and third line. But what is the first two lines? Uh, two two twenty in the Bhagavad Gita. Do you have that? 220. You can read it in the first two lines. What is the first word? The Jayate Miryate Vakadachin Nayam Bhutva Navabuya Ajo Nityo Sasvato Yampurano. The word immovable. You see the word immovable in the word, in the translation. There is permanent. Maybe. What Shashvata. is that? Shashvata. Yeah. So shash it means immovable, fixed up. The soul is fixed. It's immovable. Oops. That was movable. <laughs> I guess they didn't finish cleaning the floor, so we had a... <laughs> Sorry about that. So, yeah, so that's an example of the material energy. It's always movable. <laughs> but if there was another... If I tried to do that with a spirit soul, he wouldn't move. <laughs> So we are fixed up, but the material energy is more. Therefore, the nature of the material energy is foreign to our existence. Therefore, we can't enjoy something that's foreign to our existence because it's opposite of our nature. Something that we are fixed up and always um, experiencing something that is not, not changeable. That's why people in this material world can never be happy because when they find something that makes them happy, it's going to change. Sorry to make you work so hard here. She's enjoying moving. <laughs> moving around there. You're fixed up, but your body's moving. <laughs> so that's, yeah, that's why in this material world no one's happy because when they find something that they like, the anxiety that it'll change or they'll lose it causes them to be unhappy. And then they know it's going to change anyway, right? It's just the way it is. 
you you see this beautiful girl or a very attractive man and you think, oh, so nice, but after so many years, it's, they're not so nice anymore. <laughs> There's so many wrinkles and so many other things come flying in. <laughs> so it's just the way life is in the material world, it's constantly changing. <laughs> but we are fixed. But that energy that constantly change is, to, is meant to move the soul out of that energy. That's why it's there. So we don't try to keep trying to enjoy this energy because otherwise if, if this energy was enjoyable, we, we wouldn't be, there wouldn't be no impetus for going back to the spiritual world. So Krishna makes the energy dualistic, that wherever there is apparent enjoyment, there is also apparent misery. It comes with the same energy. And this is true. Anything you try to enjoy in this world, even though you may be attracted to it, it will cause you suffering later in some way. Either simple, right now, you might say, well, what is that? How is that understood in all terms? Well, just like two people, they love each other and they have a nice, wonderful relationship. But that in some time, that relationship will be broken. Time will change that relationship. And either one will die or one will leave. It's just the way it is. Time changes everything. So that's the... And the more people put so much emphasis on finding happiness in something, that same thing will cause them the greatest amount of suffering. <laughs> So, if, you, if your money is your main thing in life and, it's, and you just love your money and you just want to get more, then when you lose it, which will happen in due course of time, that will cause you the same, the most distress. So that's why, for devotees, we shouldn't be attached to anything in this world because we know it can't really fulfill our need and at the same time, it will eventually disappear. So the idea is to get attached to Krishna. When you get attached to Krishna, and then that attachment only grows in quality. In other words, happiness increases, knowledge increases, um, and suffering automatically de decreases by that attachment to Krishna. <laughs> So we sometimes we get scared, oh my God, hmm, I have to lose everything. Yeah, <laughs> it's just the way it is, that's the material world. So, but uh, the idea is don't waste time with trying to get attached to something in this world. Use the things in this world for the service of the Lord and then you'll always be happy and then whatever comes, you can use it, whatever goes, you're not, there's no loss. <laughs> Just the way it is, yeah. Attachment and detach, attachment is the cause of suffering, detachment is the cause of happiness. <laughs> but here, it refers to Krishna, and he's not detached or attached to anything because it's all him. <laughs> So it's all him because everything is him. Okay, so these are some things we can think about in terms of the nature of the absolute truth and our relationship with that absolute truth. Any questions or comments? Yes. Devarshi. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Okay, you said about people who think that they are God. Mm -hmm. And uh, what if uh, they are uh, so fixed up that they are God, that if you approach him, if, if you approach him and say, uh, look, you are not God, <coughs> you are servant of God. No, 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 no. <coughs> I am in this uh, lila, and if deep painting, like you say, this is my lila. Like uh, Krishna, before I was scared of my mother, because I was really scared. Now I really think that my thief paid me, paid me because it is my lila. Mm -hmm. And I put Maya around me that I think that I'm uh, usually a human being. And, uh, okay, if it's, if it's your lila, then it's my lila to punch you in the nose. <laughs> 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 yeah. 
Yeah, really, you can say that. <laughs> Anybody can say, this is my leela, right? It's your leela to do that, my leela to punch you. <laughs> so you can't complain about me punching you because it's my leela. <laughs> <laughs> That's a stupid thing. <laughs> That's no logic. <laughs> Anybody can say anything. What is it? What is it? It's, this is no saying. A goat, you know what a goat is, right? An animal. A goat will eat anything, and the madman will say anything. <laughs> No, well, he's just a madman, that's all. <laughs> but these uh, people have very big influence and uh, so many followers. Yeah, because people are not educated or they want to follow something that seems to be something that will make them God also. <laughs> yeah, there's, they got, there's so many thousands of thousands of people who are following these false gurus. <laughs> but, yeah, as you said, you know, that's the only thing they can say, and it, if they can, and they try to convince you of that, that it's a leela. That, that what, what if you, if you, then what are you doing in this material world if you're God? <laughs> Well, I've come to save you. <laughs> they can they say anything, you know. But and that happened once before when Prabhupada was talking about this one the devotees were informing Srila Prabhupada about this one yogi. And he would say, What was it? What was his name? Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. Yeah, he claimed that he was God, and he used to dress up with a peacock feather and yellow garments. He was a young boy, he was only 11 years old. His mother, you know, brought him over from Rishikesh. And uh, he, he had this power, he could touch people in the head, and all kinds of things would happen to your head. You'd start seeing lights and hearing music or something. So. And he was claiming he was Krishna. <laughs> so when the devotees were describing him, you know, Prabhupada said, hmm, I mean, we should kick on his face, we should pass urine in his face, and we should throw a pie in his face. <laughs> That's what Prabhupada said. <laughs> so one devotee thought, Nice instruction from Prabhupada. <laughs> so one of his gatherings, the devotee came and he sat in the front row. He got he lucky he, and he had a nice big chocolate cream pie. <laughs> so as soon as he came on stage to give his talk, the devotee got up and threw the pie right in his face <laughs> in front of all of his followers, you know. And his followers freaked out and they grabbed his devotee. And, they took him in the back room, and then they said, well, you know, why did you do that? Well, the devotee said, if he was God, why didn't he stop me? And they said, well, that was his leela. <laughs> yeah, and they did, they let him go, because that was his leela. <laughs> That's a true story. <laughs> no, you know, you get a lot of these persons. I mean, when I was in New Vrindavan, we had most of the most craziest people coming to our temple. There was one person, he said, I'm the exception to the rule, I don't die. <laughs> so many devotees wanted to kill him, just to show him that he was wrong. <laughs> he said that, I'm the exception, I'm not, I don't die. And he was... He was always speaking like that, and it was like, you know, when we would give class and we'd say everyone has to die, he would say, no, not me. <laughs> Devotees just wanted to prove that he was wrong, you know. <laughs> so there's a lot of, you know, as they say, um, 
Uh, a goat will eat anything and a madman will say anything. Therefore, we have to hear from Shastra. We have to hear not only from Shastra, but from Guru who knows Shastra. Otherwise, you know, you, anybody can create their own philosophy. And that's what they do nowadays. They, they actually sit down and write books creating their own ideas of what, what life is supposed to be like or what life is. There's so many people like that. In the material world, they're always creating these new ideas on, you know, and people think, oh, that's nice. We haven't been able to figure out how to be happy yet. Here's the latest book and this might do it, you know. <laughs> it goes on all the time. There's always new books. How to be influential and in, how to be, what was that famous book? How to be happy and influence people. I think that was it. The second half is how to influence people, how to be something and influence people. Bestseller was on the bestseller list for like, even people who even read it today, came out about 50 years ago. How to, you know, you know how to be successful and influence people, something like that. Yeah. And you, you know, you can speak so nice words, and the, the words seem very convincing because people don't have any reference to say, oh, well, this is all wrong, you know. <laughs> they just accept it. Why? Because they want something. They're looking for something because material life doesn't make them happy, so they're, they're willing to try anything else or give it something else to try because there, there must be happiness here somewhere. Maybe this book will give me the answer. <laughs> well, that's what goes on. But if you want the answer, it's in Bhagavatam, <laughs> Bhagavad Gita. There's the answers. But it's not about rearranging the material energy. You can't rearrange the material energy because it's controlled by Krishna. He's arranging it, <laughs> not you. <laughs> You had another question? Yes. Yeah. Uh, continuing on this, what you said. Uh, <clears throat> is the what you said, if he is God, why he not stop me? Because, you know, yeah. And uh, same argument using this one uh, Muslim boy who came to the house of uh, our Mataji and uh, he covered the deity with some cloth and Mataji came, oh, who covered this? He said, oh, you see? That they are really God, they will take it out from them. But uh, you said they are God. See, they uh, they not have power even take out this call from them. Mataji was confused. <laughs> <laughs> well, the idea is, who cares about what you do? God doesn't have to listen to you. <laughs> you think, well, I'm going to do something to God, and, and God's going to do something bad. No, you forget it. He doesn't he's bother with you. You're just playing around. <laughs> he has no... He's, just like there was one atheist, a famous atheist. His name was Fitzgerald. He was in America. He would gather with his, on, on stage and he would say, I give God five minutes to kill me. And I'm going to stand here and wait and then he would stop the whole show, five minutes, everybody be waiting for five minutes, and at the end of five minutes, he said, see, there's no God. If they, he was there, he would kill me. And people, oh, wow, yeah, he's right. <laughs> well, God doesn't care. He's going to kill him later, not, not when his, no, he wants to be killed later. <laughs> He'll get killed later. <laughs> So God is not going to come and buy any. Everybody makes these propositions to God and he has to respond to all this. He, he's not our servant. No. So yeah, the, guy, the Muslim came in, put the cloth over and said, well, yeah, he's not doing anything. But then the, uh, the Lord will say to his servant, take the cloth off me. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, <laughs> so he, he doesn't have to come down to our level to, you know, listen to our nonsense. <laughs> it's not, he's, <laughs> that's not the way God does things. And we, then we put God all on an ordinary level. That's, yeah. He'll do everything, but not when you want it to happen, <laughs> when he wants it to happen. If you want, you want to control God by the what you do, that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to control God. But God cannot be controlled by us, and especially by people who are mimical. He just ignores them, you know. It's like, you know, sometimes you're there and your your kids are bothering you, right? So you just ignore them. Right? <laughs> yeah. You know, instead of telling them shut up, go away, you just ignore them and then they stop, right? <laughs> Somebody's trying to get your attention and you don't want to be you don't want to get the attention. So you could turn around and say, don't bother me. But you can just ignore it, and then the guy will stop after some time. And Krishna just ignores them. <laughs> so, he doesn't waste time with them. See the point? <laughs> yeah. Anything else? Anyone else? Any questions? Okay. Thank you. Hare Krishna, Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. Yeah.